Hey everybody, welcome back to Code Dynamic Websites with PHP. This lecture is called Intro to PHP Functions. And in this video, we're in a whole new section now. We've left behind our section on PHP loops. And now we're actually gonna get started with some introductory level function tutorials. So let's jump right in. In your Code Dynamic Websites course files folder, we are in 23 functions. In your code editor, make sure to open the final and practice.php files in the 23 functions folder. Practice.php is the sandbox that we're going to use to build what is in final.php. Final.php looks like this. Here in our final example, we are using four built in PHP functions sort, rsort, string to lower, and sha1. And we're gonna be experimenting with those in our sandbox. So why don't we jump into our lecture to learn a little bit more about PHP functions. So if you've made it this far, congratulations are in order. We've covered a lot of ground and our PHP coding skills are becoming much more refined and skillful. I'm gonna go ahead and say that functions are the meat and potatoes or beans and rice, if you're vegetarian, of most programming languages. They are fundamental when cooking a tasty PHP dinner. Cheesy. In PHP, there is a massive library, over 1,000 of baked in functions, pun totally intended, that do everything from printing text on your screen to adding information to a database and a lot more. It's good to know that there are two types of PHP functions, built in PHP functions, and custom functions. You can write your own custom PHP functions. Pretty cool. So remember echo and print? Those little guys are functions. A few important facts about functions. A function is a block of statements that can be used repeatedly in a program. Also, a function will not execute immediately when a page loads. Rather, it just kind of sits there waiting for you to call it, which brings me to the last point. A function will be executed by a call to the function, and that is a reference to W3Schools. So let's take a look at the basic syntax of a function. So here we have the word function, and then a space, and then a function name followed by an opening and closing parentheses, and then your opening and closing curly braces. Inside the curly, curly braces, you execute some code, or you put your code within the function. So please note that a function name can start with a letter or underscore, not a number. And here's a hot tip. You can name the function whatever you wish. Just try and have it reflect what the function actually does. So if you're calling a PHP function that reorders your array in alphabetical order, don't have the function be called awesome sauce. You know what I mean? Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so let's just uh, look a little bit into a PHP sort function. So this function allows us to sort an array in alphabetical order. First, let's create an array. So here we have dinner, and we have an array, and we have our meat, potatoes, beans, and rice, all in one dinner array. So then let's run our array through the sort function. So we have our array here in our variable, and then add the array as a parameter to the sort function, like this, sort, dinner. Now all we have to do is echo our array on the screen using a for each loop, which we've covered, like so. So we have a for each loop, dinner as ingredient, and then echo ingredient, and then break onto a new line. So if we coded it correctly, the above will echo the array in alphabetical order, like so. Beans, meat, potatoes, and rice. If you're looking to sort your array in reverse order, you can use the PHP R sort for reverse sort function. Feel free to read more about the sort function and other sorting functions using the following links. We won't be covering all of the built-in PHP functions in this course because that would take an incredibly long time. Besides, it's fun to be in a situation where you're programming and then you think, hey, I wonder if there's a PHP function that will do this for me. This is why I'll leave you with the curiosity to experiment. Google is your best friend and you may also refer to this directory right here. So let's jump into our code editor. 
make sure to change the my name variable to your name. Everything else should be set up and good to go for you. Now let's go down to our sandbox. And why don't we start with the sort function? So let's create an array, call it dinner. And in our array, we're going to have a few items. One's going to be meat. And actually, you know what? You can, you can put whatever items you want in here. You can have the same as mine, or you can put your favorite dinner items or ingredients in here. And as many as you want, as long as you put them in a string and separate them by uh, comma. And then you can sort them. Pretty cool. So potatoes, beans, and then rice. Cool. So then what we want to do is add the array as a parameter to the sort function. So sort, it's a built-in PHP function, but we need to put the variable as a parameter right here in the sort function. Last but not least, we need to echo the sorted array. And we know how to, to echo an array on the screen. We use a for each loop. So for each dinner, so for each item in the dinner array, store it in an ingredient uh, variable and then echo ingredient and then break so i put that in strings here because i just uh i wanted to put the break tag at the end you could also do it differently by concatenating it at the end but i just put it all in strings because it should work as long as you put it in double quotation marks good so why don't we check it out in the practice.php file there it is so sort beans meat potatoes and rice if you use different ingredients, then you can, you'll see that they will have sorted in alphabetical order. Otherwise, uh, this is correct and in alphabetical order. So why don't we go down to our sort here in our sandbox. Now we don't actually need to write out the dinner variable again here because we've already done it up here. In fact, we could have put the dinner variable way up at the top of the page in above all of the HTML, but for our example, I just put it here. So because we already wrote our, our dinner array, we don't actually need to rewrite it. So all we need to do is sort, sorry, our sort, our array, which is dinner. And then after that, print or echo the sorted array using for each loop. So dinner as ingredient. and then echo, ingredient, and then a break tag. So let's give that a look in our sort. Rice, potatoes, meat, and beans. Perfect, let's go to string to lower. So string to lower basically takes all of your text in a variable or whatever, and it takes it makes everything lowercase. It takes all the capital letters and just put some all lowercase. Useful if you're wanting to do things like if you're logging in and uh, a username is case sensitive and somebody typed, you know, had their caps lock button on and they typed in their username in all caps. You can use string to lower to filter that username and make sure it's lowercase so they don't have to retype their username. So why don't we just do an example here. Let's say text and let's say Twinkle, notice I'm using caps in some of these cases. Twinkle, little star, all caps right there at the end. Just shaking it up. So let's run the text variable through the string to lower function and then reassign the value to the text variable. So here we have text again, and we're going to run the original variable, string to lower, and then we're going to put text as a parameter here, running it through that function, and then echo text. Let's see what we get. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, all lowercase. Perfect. So now let's go down to SHA-1. Now what is SHA-1, you may ask? Well, basically SHA-1 calculates the SHA-1 hash of a string. It's kind of vague, but basically what it does is it returns a value of a 40 character hexadecimal number. So SHA-1 is kind of a way of how you um, encrypt a string of text or say a password, for example. 
It's not the most secure, and there are much more secure methods of using encryption for passwords, but SHA-1 is a very simple PHP function that uh, basically encrypts your password into a 40-character hexadecimal uh, value. So why don't we just try this back in our code editor. So we're going to say password is equal to my password, just like that. Let's say that's what your password was. Your password is terrible. Echo before password and then a break tag. So this is just going to let us t tell us what our current password is. Now, keep in mind, SHA-1 doesn't change your password. It just encrypts it so you can't easily tell what your password is. So if someone were to try and if they hacked into the database and they saw your database table that said username password, they saw your username was John Snow and then your password was White Walker, then there you go. They know they can they can use your username password combination. However, if they logged in and saw your username was John Snow, password was a bunch of random characters that's they can't log in with that if they copied that those 40 characters pasted it in the password field tried logging in no dice it's not going to work because usually what happens is when you log in you type in your password in the password field hit submit php then encrypts that password checks it against the database to see if it matches the encrypted password and then logs you in if it's correct so basically if you if you just saw the 40 character uh, value, the SHA-1 version, and copied and pasted it in your password field, it's not going to do anything because then it's going to try and encrypt that. So it's double encrypting it and it's not going to work. So basically they'd need to know how to reverse the SHA-1 encryption. And there are ways of doing that. There are some pretty smart hackers out there. But here's just a very simple introduction to password encryption using SHA-1. Okay, so let's go password again. And then we're going to say equals SHA-1, and then in here, run password as a parameter of SHA-1. And then echo after, and then password. So save that, and let's check it out. Here we go. Before my password, after 40 characters of randomness, and that is your encrypted password. So this is what it would store in the database, theoretically. And this is what you'd log in with. So when you log in, type this in, and then the input uh, in the back end, PHP would encrypt it using SHA-1, test it against the database to see if it matches, and then you're good to go. So basically, there are, your, there are just four simple examples of PHP functions, built-in functions, um, and hopefully that was helpful. In the next video, we're going to be playing around with some custom functions. So we're going to build our own custom PHP functions. Pretty cool. See you there.